In the early 2000s, sports trucks were somewhat hot. Ford had one, Chevy had one. So as to not look weak, Dodge decided it's probably time to get into this segment. And not only did they get into it, they threw a V10 into it. And so now, in the days of the Raptor and the Ram TRX, let's reevaluate the original Viper truck and just what made it so special. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell. That way you get high quality content and I get closer to making this my long term career. Thank you, now back to the review. This truck came about for the 2004 model year and lasted until the 2006 model year. This is just based on a regular cab 1500 Dodge Ram and all of them were rear wheel drive. For 2004, they were all standard cabs. For 2005, you had the availability of a quad cab model. Additionally, most trucks are one of three colors, black, red, and silver. There were a couple more rare colors like yellow and white. There's rumored to be less than 10,000 left in existence. This one is available. The kind people over at Foreign Auto Connect in Bloomington, Indiana, let me take it for a test drive and I would like to thank them. They specialize in enthusiast cars, so check them out if you're looking for something different. And if you are wondering, the price of this truck is 36.5 with 46,000 miles. Up front, you're gonna have a tweaked fascia, which Dodge said was designed in an air tunnel to improve high speed stability. This also rides on a Bilstein suspension system and has modified steering knuckles and a rear stabilizer bar, which dramatically improves the handling. It also drops the truck an inch in the front and two and a half in the back. While mostly subtle, I think the revised color keyed bumpers go a long way for the aesthetics here. But since this thing was literally a truck to start with, you still have 8.1 inches of ground clearance. While this might be the most petite way that you can get a Dodge Ram 1500, it's still fucking huge. It holds off that street truck look so well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Is this too basic or too flashy? I think it's just right for this kind of vehicle. And the base spec of the truck also adds to the garage build fun factor that this thing has going on. Like you just have unpainted mirrors and door handles paired up with giant 22 inch wheels that look awesome. This also even foregoes keyless entry. However, it still does have power locks. Now back here, you'll find a six foot bed and a spoiler, which is a sentence that I feel like almost shouldn't exist. Now, if you do need to use the full potential of the bed back here, you can remove the spoiler somewhat easily, but really outside of the lower towing capacity with the manual transmission, which came on every regular cab model, this really has all of the functionality of a regular truck. And the inside is the same way for better and worse. The Ram SRT10 really uh, looks more Ram than SRT10. The pros from that include kangaroo shaming storage. Not only do you have many cubbies, but you have them in various shapes and sizes to account for all of your stuff. And since this is a three passenger model, you have storage in that middle seat, but you can also fit a third person up here and the truck is so wide that if they don't mind being elbowed in the crotch every now and then, this is actually accommodable. And you actually have a decent amount of storage behind the front seats as well, where you'll also find a subwoofer. This one has the Infinity Audio System, which is standard with the Ram SRT10. This particular one also has an aftermarket head unit. The regular one was that head unit that Dodge was putting in like everything around this era. This has enough power, but it is not a super crisp system, and it is commonly upgraded. In 2005 and 2006, you got navigation that is probably useless now, and Bluetooth calling. Buying a Ram SRT10 because you want technology, though, would be like getting a cat to help you sleep better at night. However, if you want even more practicality from the SRT10, that quad cab model featured six seats. Either way, the interior of the Viper truck is spartan. The steering wheel would fit well in a box truck, and the abundance of cheap plastics, which could definitely be worse, don't make you think 500 horsepower V10. Like this feels far more upscale than what a Chevy Silverado of the same year felt. You have a few aluminum looking plastic pieces to kind of break up the cabin, but really outside of the sport bucket seats, the oil temp gauge placed on the A-pillar here, 
and the cool Hurst shifter, there's not anything telling you that this is as special as it really is. Unlike on the outside where it makes it very clear that this is powered by Viper. I feel like Dodge at least gave sport truck owners things that they would probably want, like the upgraded sound system and these seats, which let's talk about them for a little bit. They hold you in actually well enough. Spoiler, this isn't going to have super crazy cornering abilities. So you don't need racing bucket seats that are trying to give you kidney punches at every moment. But these do the job well enough. They're supportive. And I think I could take these on a long journey and be just fine. Now, since this is a used car review, I gotta mention this is a Dodge. So if someone didn't baby this thing as much as the previous owner of this truck did, dashes do crack. Not the highest quality product. I mean, this is again based on a $25,000 truck. So the quality feels as such. Now a couple more cool features before we take this out. You can adjust the pedals and the pedals themselves are also really cool. The gas pedal almost looks like it's a uh, floor hinged, but it's not. Additionally, to start the truck, it's kind of like an S2000 where you uh, actually still have to put the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position, but you can't turn it on like that. You have to press the dedicated engine start button. Is this necessary? Absolutely not, but neither is this truck, so who cares? Also to remove the key, you have that old style button release. This was 45,000 when new. Accounting for inflation, this would be 65 grand. For that kind of money, this interior feels like only a mildly dressed up Ram and not a full on muscle truck. But as you might expect, when you take this thing out on the road, it all comes together. Powering the Ram SRT10 is an 8.3 liter V10, straight from the Viper, of course, 500 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque. I am scared to do this. All right. It's not the fastest vehicle I've driven, far from that, but it's just weird because it feels like a complete tuner truck. When you hop into a Trackhawk, I mean, it does feel like a Jeep Grand Cherokee, but there's a lot more to it. It, it prepares you for the experience and it feels more buttoned down. It's not just a base, two-door ram cab you know it's not just this chunky steering wheel here that looks like it's straight from the regular ram okay so now that i'm a little bit more prepared for what this thing can do let's give it a little dash to 60 and see what the numbers say okay for this test we have ac off there's no traction control and it actually wasn't available throughout this whole generation surprisingly easy to launch it's got plenty of traction or at least more so than what I was thinking and I'm sure having those 305 series tires on the back definitely helps this also has a limited slip diff as you would expect and traction bars which should explain why I never experienced any axle hop my result 5.5 seconds to 60 I was definitely easier on the launch and my first to second shift than I could have been because I thought it would break loose too easy but it hooks up really well so I thought I would be more aggressive and try it again Drive it right, and a 5 second 0 to 60 shouldn't be impossible, with car and driver managing 4.9 seconds back in 2004. Quad cab buyers will get a 4 speed auto only, car and driver got 5.6 seconds from that. And when it comes to brakes, these are more than competent, with giant rotors bringing this truck to a halt like a regular sedan, which is leagues better than the regular truck. The V10 is torquey down low and has brutal power, which you will pay for at the pump. If you want to daily this, the premium gas with 9 miles per gallon in the city will leave your wallet bruised and your sanity in question. As much as I love the engine, the Tremec T56 6-speed manual transmission is what really caught me off guard. Not only is it smooth, 
it's very easy to just drive around town with this thing. The clutch isn't too heavy and it's very predictable. You can be a very smooth driver with this transmission. Now when it comes to throw length, yeah, it's going to be longer because the lever here is like two feet long and I don't think I'm exaggerating. So the throws do have a little bit more length to them, but I don't think I would install a short throw shifter in here or anything because you can still row through the gears reasonably fast. One knock for the transmission is that you really should watch out for third and fourth gear. The long lever makes it a bit hard at first to shift quickly through those gates, especially from second to third, but I did get the hang of it towards the end of the drive. This is so gratifying to shift and probably the most macho driving experience I've had to date. But overall, I love this. The feel is great. If you're buying one of these trucks, I mean, it would be really nice to have a six-seater model, but I don't think I could pair this up with a four-speed automatic. This thing does actually have a, a reasonably quiet exhaust, which is a little bit of a letdown. V10s have an awesome sound, and you only really get that noise when you're really pushing the truck. When you're just driving around town normally, it, it just sounds like a regular ramp. Over rough roads, this thing was compliant. It still feels like a truck. There's a little bit of a bouncing motion to it at most times. Um, you do feel pretty much all the imperfections there, but it takes a reasonable amount for it to really crash into the cabin. A regular Ram and my old Tacoma, I think is a little bit more comfortable than this thing just because this rides on Bill Steins. It's, you know, lowered a couple inches and really is supposed to be a performance machine. So let's see how it does on a nice windy road. body roll is actually pretty reasonable. I mean, it's more than pronounced. I don't think I'm gonna be able to really heel toe this thing, at least not how I normally do. It's definitely a truck. There's no hiding that curb weight there. It's kind of dangerous to really take this thing up to any speed because since you're riding so high, it doesn't feel as fast as it really is going. And it does actually do a pretty good job of feeling stable at speed. So I think it would be quite easy to get in over your head in this truck because this is still body on frame. At its limits, it's just not going to be as predictable as what something should be if it's able to go this fast. Now you do have that spoiler back there and, and yes it does help with downforce. They did put this thing through a wind tunnel when they made it so that's why the bumper is different from the regular Ram along with the modified steering knuckles up front which give it a quicker steering ratio than the regular Ram but I mean the steering is still numb. It, it has no feeling whatsoever like what you would get with you know any truck and on center, it's still not super tight. Uh, if you wanna go crush back roads in your Ram SRT10, you can, but it's probably just gonna end up being more of a hassle than it is fun after some time doing that. Where this would really shine, it's really highway poles, drag strips, and just brief jaunts to a nice back road. But it's not something that I really wanted to canyon carve for a long time. It's just impressive for a truck. I was expecting this to be an oversteer nightmare, but so far it really more feels like it wants to push more than anything. Turn in, as you would expect, is not great. And really, I don't mean to understate the handling capabilities of this. This is night and day difference from a regular Ram truck of this era. It really did go through some serious work and this is impressive, but it's just a matter of where they were starting at and what they're working with. It's a heavy body on frame truck with a giant engine up front. There's really only so much they could do with the technology that they had back then. Once we get past those improved handling characteristics, this nasty engine and this slick six-speed manual, it's a Dodge Ram. There isn't really a whole lot of insulation in here. It's not super noisy. It doesn't feel like it's falling apart, but you know, the interior quality is just not super great. This one was luckily kept together really well, but I think something like this is so much of a unicorn that it's well worth the now more inflated prices. These are regularly grabbing $35,000, $40,000. And I'm sorry to have said this like 30 times, but this has a V10 and a six-speed manual and a truck bed. 
This kind of thing has never existed and it's never going to exist again. That's not to say that modern sport trucks aren't great. The Ram TRX is more bonkers than this in pretty much every way, but it is more trophy truck than street beast. We might get electric trucks that will blow this out of the water as well, but there's no replicating the hot rod feel of this with electric. Overall, this is no longer otherworldly fast and the cabin largely feels like a 17 year old work truck but it has soul. It emulates a dream build for the average muscle car enthusiast. It's such an oddball truck that handles better than it has any right to. And there aren't any big issues with these outside of questionable reliability from the auto trans and power steering problems. This particular truck definitely had a noisy power steering pump that made it sound like it was supercharged. It's not going to be super cheap to maintain by any means because it has giant brakes, requires a ton of oil, and is designed with performance in mind. But it isn't out of the question for your middle class buyers. In summary, if you appreciate a good Frankenstein truck build, but don't have the time, know-how, or will to build one yourself, I have great news. Dodge made one for you, and it's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you in the next one.